He's a man plucked out of time, sharing his love for history with a new generation. When you read a K novel, his love and care bleeds onto the page. Guy Gavriel K has been around for quite a while. First publishing in 1984, continuing to this very day. Known for writing historical fantasy based on cultures from around the world and doing an incredible job of it. With the long list of novels under his belt, as well as serving under Christopher Tolkien during the completion and publication of The Silmarillion by J.R.R. Tolkien, K is a really interesting figure. He's often considered a fantasy author, yet many of the tentpoles of the genre are absent from his work. He's not frequently concerned with high magic or saving the world, and less and less so in his later works. In fact, many of his books are more like paintings. Gorgeously realized landscape artwork depicting a place and time, I'd say better than many of his peers. If you listen to many of the interviews he's done over the years, which are few and far between, you'll even find that he speaks as though he's from a different time. With a certain degree of thought, dignity, and control of the language that emanates an esteemed air. In an era of social media saturation, you'll find that his Instagram page, one of his only active socials, is only sparsely populated with iPhone photos of places he's traveled and old friends. Just small glimpses into his daily life that fall few and far between. And for a successful author, the follower count is nothing to write home about. Guy Gavriel K has yet to embrace the new generation, and that's okay. He's not plugged in the way that most of us are. He simply continues to keep his head down, producing gorgeous novels for us to enjoy. A lot of modern writing advice would even go against a lot of what he produces. His books are not written at a breakneck pace. They don't have heavily stylized viewpoints. The action spectacles are few and far between, and they often put the magnifying glass to smaller skirmishes instead of world-ending plots. K isn't focused on hot-button topics. Most of all, his books capture a time, and that's really why I wanted to make this piece. It's important because we can't lose authors like Guy Gavriel Kay. And if you're a young fantasy reader, I beg you not to overlook him. In 1990's novel Tigana, Kay weaves a breathtaking tapestry of a fantastical Renaissance Italy called the Peninsula of the Palm. We follow a band of resistance fighters disguised as a musical group whose songs echo through the halls of your mind so real that you can almost hear them, despite them being relegated to a page. In 2010, another K novel called Under Heaven brings us a reimagined fantasy version of Tang China and a fictionalized take on the Anxi Rebellion. A long story with a large cast of characters all working tirelessly in the shadows to seize political power. Often, Kay's work is set in an epic and beautiful land full of living art. And Kay doesn't hesitate to indulge in the little details that end up making his books feel so authentic to the period which they mirror. Many of his books speak of royalty and war, but after reading, you'll find that, more than anything, they're about humans. Humans lost to time, with scars and moral dilemmas of their own. In Tigana, one of our main characters, Dianora, is a concubine to the tyrannical king as well as a survivor from Tigana itself, the place which the king wiped off the map and banished from the mouths of his people forever. Yet, she's torn between her growing love for the king, who's not always the monster that a lot of the other protagonists suggest, and her own thirst for revenge. In A Song for Arbonne, the lines of good and ill are blurred, as the opposing sides of the masculine land of Gorhot and the feminine Arbonne differ only in their goals and not in their methods. I hope I'm pronouncing all this stuff right. You see, there are two main threads that hold Kay's novels together, and they're really important. Places and people. Kay's prose is gorgeous, and there's sure to be some measure of action throughout but it's his attention to detail in the way that he depicts these historical locations and the humanity of the characters that inhabit them, for good or evil, that represents the heart of his work. Kay isn't interested in gimmicks, marketing campaigns, or trends. He's a man plucked out of time, sharing his love for history with a new generation. When you read a Kay novel, his love and care bleeds onto the page. The places he takes you, he's lived in, and he makes them his own with the level of care and respect for the source material that oozes with passion. We cannot let authors like Kay fade into forgotten times. 
just as he beckons us to remember times long before. K is a rare gem, and there are others like him, but I feel like they're growing less and less common. As new writers, there's a lot that we can learn from them. K's writing is regal. His words dance on the page with grace, telling slow-burning, elegant tales. But the magic that fills them is not the kind that you can see. It's the kind that you can feel. In his 2019 novel, A Brightness Long Ago, K writes, We build the memories that turn us into what we are, and then what we were, as we look back. We live in the light that comes to us. K rarely employs the use of typical fantasy magic or chosen ones and the like, but there's a magic in these words. History holds far more fantasy than most of us can come up with on our own. So don't let it slip away. Make your words as beautiful as the worlds that they inhabit. Just like Guy Gabriel K. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you enjoy content like this, please be sure to leave a like and a subscribe on the channel and check back every week for more content like this. I will see you guys in the next video.